Hello everybody, it's me Faith. In this video, I wanted to discuss umlahleni. Umlahleni is one of those plants that are in high demand and are very expensive. If you go to the treessa.co.za website, this is the website that sells a wide range of trees in South Africa. Umlahleni is sold for 12,000 rand. Umlahleni has strong and durable wood. And historically, the wood was exploited for making wagons, which were in high demand at the time. Wagons are four-wheeled trailers pulled by animals. The harvesting was so excessive that nowadays it's rare to find fully matured or over-matured trees. Fort trekkers used the wood to make wagon parts and wooden tools, amongst other things. Umlahlela's wood is reddish in color and looks very similar to mahogany wood. Hence, the wood was and still is used to make furniture. The wood was and still is also used for construction. Nowadays, umlahlela is in high demand for its medicinal benefits. The bark is the part of the tree that is mostly preferred in traditional medicine. Umlahlela is such a popular medicinal plant that it is on the list of the 60 most frequently traded medicinal plants in South Africa. In the Eastern Cape, Umlahlela is among the top 10 most commonly traded plants. To meet the high demand, the tree has been overexploited. Even though the bark is the most preferred part for traditional medicines, because some debuckers are unskilled when extracting the bark, they inadvertently kill the tree because they cut into the tree's vascular cambium when harvesting or when debarking. The overexploitation, unsustainable harvesting, and the high price for the tree has landed it on the South African plant red data list where. Its conservation status is recorded as near threatened. The tree's population trend is considered as being in decline. In some parts of the country, such as KZN, the plant is completely conservation dependent. The need to conserve the tree has resulted in the government declaring it as a protected tree, calling for stricter management measures to ensure its conservation. Umlaseni is scientifically known as Cortesia dentata. The genus name Cortesia is in honor of William Curtis, an English botanist, entomologist, and founder of the Curtis Botanical Magazine that was first published in 1787 and is still relevant in the 21st century. The genus belongs to the Conaceae family, which has about 15 genera, of which the Cortesia genus is the only one that's found in Africa. As a side note, the Cornacea family is also known as the dogwood family. This is because the most well-known genus in the entire family is Cornus, a decorative dogwood. Hence, the Cornacea is also known as dogwood. The species name Dentata is Latin for toothed referring to the toothed or serrated margins of the species' leaves. Umlaseni is geographically endemic to South Africa, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. It can be found growing in forests, forest margins, grasslands, and on grassy mountain slopes. In South Africa, Umlaseni can be found growing in the forest patches of the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, KZN, Mpumalanga, and the Limpompo provinces. And as mentioned earlier, in KZN, the trees have been in decline due to the high demand. Umlaseni is a medium-sized to large fast-growing evergreen tree that can grow up to a height of 20 meters. When the tree is still young, the bark is smooth and gray in color, and when it matures, the bark becomes rough, dark brown to black, with heavy fissures. The leaves are leathery, glossy dark green with toothed margins, an egg shape, and 
pointed tips. The unscented flowers are small and cream colored. The fruits are fleshy white and edible with a bitter taste. The leaves and bark of umlaseni have extracts that are effective against bacteria, fungi, inflammation and parasites. Hence the tree is said to have antibacterial, antimycobacterial, otherwise known as anti-tuberculosis, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and antiviral toxin activities as well as glucose utilization. Umlaseni is a valuable medicinal plant. As mentioned earlier, the bark is the most preferred part of the plant in traditional medicine. The bark is used in the making of a concoction that is used as an aphrodisiac, which increases the sexual attraction between partners. The bark is used to make a tonic to purify the blood, as well as to make an emetic and a purgative. So these are all cleansing substances. The bark is also used to treat ailments such as diabetes, hypertension, malaria, and tuberculosis. Remember the anti-tuberculosis activities in the bark and leaves that were mentioned earlier. The plant was recently discovered as an alternative remedy for management of obesity. The bark is also used to treat skin conditions such as pimples, the rash, acne, and eczema. The extract on the leaves contain antifungal activities that are effective against candida albicans, which causes esopharyngeal candidiasis, an opportunistic infection often observed in patients with HIV. The bark is also used to treat a number of stomach ailments such as diarrhea, dysentery, and a bloody stomach. The bark is also used to treat sexually transmitted infections. The leaves and bark are also used to suppress certain types of cancer such as esophageal cancer, which is cancer of the esophagus. Umlaseni has been used against nematodes and parasites. So flatworms are an example of parasites and roundworms are an example of nematodes. So the leaves of the tree contain extracts that can inhibit the mobility of nematodes. Umlaseni is widely used as an ornamental tree and as a long-term hedge tree in full sun or light shade. Hedge trees are a row of closely planted trees or shrubs. The bark is also used to set a trap for people who use witchcraft against you or who are bewitching you. This is known as Ukupa in Zulu. Mlaseni can be prepared in different ways to treat a number of ailments. Because of the tree's scarcity and conservation status, many traditional healers have opted to use the bark of the tree in special mixtures and not just by itself. Hot waters is a disease that is endemic to Africa. It is a tick-borne disease that can potentially kill animals such as cattle, sheep, or goats. Farmers in the Eastern Cape treat hot waters with ethno-veterinary medicine made from a mixture that comprises of the bark of umlaseni and the bark of umapipa, scientifically known as Rapania melanoflois. To suppress esophageal cancer or cancer of the esophagus, the bark and leaves are stamped and boiled to make a decoction. The decoction is then strained and the liquid administered orally every day until the symptoms of relief are observed. In the Eastern Cape, diarrhea is treated by boiling the bark in water and administering the strained liquid orally until the patient is healed. Omlaseni can be used to treat dermatological ailments such as eczema and pimples. To treat pimples, ground the bark into powder and make a powdered bark infusion that can be applied topically or directly on the skin. To lose weight with umlaseni, make a decoction using the bark and take the strained liquid orally. 
to make an emetic to treat a bleeding stomach or isisusekazi, soak the bark in hot water, allow the mixture to cool, strain it and use the liquid as an emetic. The bark is also used to perform a ritualized cleansing to remove bad luck. Historically, the bark, leaves and twigs were used for tanning leather. Tanning leather is when you treat the skin and hide of animals to make leather. For example, you can turn the hide or skin of a cow into leather. Leather tanning is an interesting process. I had an opportunity to watch people perform the tanning process a couple of years ago. The process involves changing the protein structure of the animal's skin or hide in order to make it durable and less likely to rot or decompose. I didn't know that it was possible to change the protein structure of something when it is no longer alive. I only discovered that fact after watching the process. It turns out the cells continue working even after death. In a lot of ways, umlahleni is very similar to unukane, a plant that's scientifically known as Okotia bulata, in that both plants are on the South African plant red data list because historically they were both overexploited for furniture and nowadays they are overexploited for traditional medicine. Both umlahleni and unukane are on the list of the most traded plants in South Africa and they are both conservation dependent and classified as protected. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, stay blessed and bye.